everything going. I'm checking my levels. I have audio now. I'll pull up my iPad here so I can see what the comments are. So we are preparing for our photographic safari to Kenya, Africa. So we're going to be seeing the big five and we're going to be pursuing with the grace of God, the super tusker elephants. And if you don't know what super tusker elephant is, let me share with you. Super tusker elephants are those elephants that have a DNA strand to where their tusks grow their entire life, hence super tusker. And they're, each tusk could weigh anywhere from 150 to 200 pounds. And these elephants are larger than your normal African elephants. And sadly, there are less than 30 mature breeding males left on the planet. So organizations like the Savo Trust, they're doing everything they can to protect these remaining super tuskers and make sure their DNA gets passed down and to ensure that these amazing, giant, beautiful beasts do not go extinct from our planet. So that's one of the goals of our photographic workshops is that everybody can share their stories, share their photographs with their audience. And the more awareness there is, the more uh, passion there is for creating and saving wildlife refuges and using your photographic talents and gifts for conservation. All right, so let's see what I can do. I think uh, one thumbs up. So hopefully audio is coming through all right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my desktop. So I'm going to go through the lay flats of what I've packed, what I'm bringing, and to always be prepared for, for uh, everything. So here we go. Let's come up here. Get the desktop going. Desktop and book. Okay. I'm going to share photo mechanic. There we go in the monitor. Everything is up. Keep checking. Hey, Mark, audio is great. Thank you for letting me know. I greatly appreciate that. If you have any questions at all, please uh, drop them in the feed. So here's how I roll. I did a little video a week or two ago about how I pack. And this is what I take pretty much for anything wildlife related. So this is a think tank or mind shift backlight 46 liter backpack. And this has got everything that I needed, it, including my digital darkroom. So I harness the straps in front to keep this backpack as small as possible. It does feet, it does meet all the international flight requirements. In fact, I take photographs of all my bags that I travel with on every airplane and I keep a file folder on my phone. So if I get questioned at a counter, I'm like, look, I'm on a bombardier um, commuter plane and this backpack will fit in the overhead. I also have these inexpensive trolley wheels that I put under the backpack, bungee it all together. So now this is my rolling bag. And then if I need to, I use uh, my think tank shape-shifting bag for overflow. So let's get into what's inside there. All right, so here's the contents of the bag. What's nice about the backlight is this top pack can come off. And that could be your day pack. You could put all your essentials in there. We're going to have a period where we're going to fly from bush camp to bush camp, but our luggage is going to go by Land Rover. So we have limited amount of weight and space that we could take on the bush plane. So we'll take our overnight ditty bag in this little uh, top sack. You can put change clothes, whatever you need in there. And there's plenty of space in this back light backpack and it's really comfortable. I've hiked with this. So I have the Canon 600 millimeter EF lens. I still have not uh, upgraded or changed to the RF lens because the EF version three is just so fantastic. And the only difference between this lens and the RF version is they permanently put on an RF mount on the back end here. So at this point in time, I see no reason to do it. I am hoping, I was at Canon Expo about eight years ago where they had a 600DO prototype there. So it was much smaller. 
Hopefully that'll come out or a 600 with a built-in 1.4 extender. That would be great. Um, my other lens that I will have is the RF 100 to 500, 24 to 105, a 15 to 35, and then I've stacked all my extenders and I am bringing two EF to RF adapters because if one breaks and I drop it, gets damaged, then I will not be able to use the 600, so I'm bringing it back up. With that, I can use my EF 200, I mean my EF 2 times extender, uh, one four extension tube, and I'm sorry, a 12 millimeter extension tube and a one four extender. I have all my batteries. Remember, when you travel, your batteries cannot be checked in the hold. They have to be carried on board with you because they're afraid that they could catch fire in the hold. I will be bringing three EL1 speed lights. This is the Canon speed light transmitter. And then I have these uh, rain sleeves for dust or rain if we get caught out in the elements. They're quick and easy and they all fit either in any of the side pockets or in the top. I will have my three bodies, which is actually going to be an R5 which I will use primarily as a remote camera so that we could deploy it out and hopefully animals will come past it for that nice low angle view. Of course, two R3s, those are my go-to main camera bodies because they are just so responsive, so quick, so intuitive and fit so well ergonomically in my hand and intuitively with my brain. I also have a blower bulb, a Giotto rocker blower bulb, little shaving brush, a couple of headlights that do have the capability to project red light. So when we're out at night for our night vision, once our eyes adjust, it won't spoil that. A couple of carabiners. So all of that fits within the backpack along with my digital darkroom. So 16 inch MacBook Pro, I will have a hub with me so I can plug in all my different devices. I have two SanDisk SSD drives to back up in the field. Sorry about that. Two SanDisk card readers, a Tether Tools a power bank. This little guy here is a power supply that will power my MacBook Pro. It will charge watches, phones, all those devices from one plug. We have all of our identification, passports. Remember to always copy the contents of your wallet, copy your passports, put them in different bags, all your visas, um, medical information, all of that. Now also, it's a good idea to have it on your phone and even upload it to Dropbox. All my cables are nice and neat and tied so that when we go through airport security, I take them out of these two think tank cable managers and everything's very tidy and easy to inspect. I have a USB flash drive so that we can share files between computers during the workshop for critiques in the field. And these are Gecko transmitters, GPS transmitters that will actually, my clone is starting, that will actually work whether a phone is near them or not. So what's great about the Gecko devices is they are on their own uh, cellular signal and GPS signal. So I can immediately locate if my bag gets misplaced, lost, or doesn't make it to my destination. Whereas if you're using an Apple iTag, you're relying on someone with a phone to come within proximity of your bag and then report its location to you. So that's really helpful to have. Here's my overflow bag, which in and of itself is already at 40 pounds. And this has got all kinds of cool stuff in it. So I will be doing portraits when I'm there of our attendees in Africa, also of Maasai people, tribe people. I want to do portraits when I'm there. I am going to be bringing a little Canon Click printer so I could give them a little, you know, two by three instant print. But I'm going to use my Westcott Halo because it fits in the suitcase and I could feather this light. It's very versatile, great option. Uh, nano stand. And then I have a One Pro Universal Power Strip. This is not a um, transformer, it is just a power strip. So this is universal and I do have my plug that plugs into it and I have it for every country that I've visited. So Great Britain, Africa, Europe, US, everything. Now this little device here, this is an actual uh, intelligent uh, power converter by Bestech. 
So it has a smart transformer. If you plug something in that needs power stepped down, it will step it down. But all the devices I'm bringing are dual voltage. So they work in the US and they work in Europe and Africa. So I won't need that transformer to step it down. It also has four USB ports. And as you can see, it comes with a European plug. And then you just put your African plug or whatever country plug you need on it. Above that are pocket wizards. I will be using pocket wizards to fire a remote camera. So need be, possibly even if I run into any radio frequency interference, they're my backup radio signal for my Canon EL1s. I have a Leatherman. Remember any type of uh, sharp object, sharp tool has to be checked. Oh, wrong way, has to be checked. I am using the interval timer for the electronic cable release for long night exposures. You could use your self timer or you could uh, use the interval timer built into the cameras now. I'm bringing a Platypod Extreme and ball head instead of a tripod. Again, you can only bring so much stuff with you. Here's the Platy ball. Here's my universal uh, plug adapter which I will be using during our layover in London. So if I need to download, edit, charge my phone, anything of that nature, you can see it's universal. I will be bringing several Platypod Ultras. So if I want to strap a flash to a tree, the vehicle, anything like that, I could do it. I'm bringing some microphones because I want to capture the sound. We are going to be there during the Great Migration. So I have microphones, I have a Ninja 5 Plus monitor and recorder so that I can simultaneously capture 4K video while taking still photographs with any of my cameras. And it will record to the external hard drive within that monitor without causing the camera to overheat and without eating up storage space, storage space on the memory cards. Of course, your chargers for the R3, R5, and EL1s. Yes, I will be bringing a light meter because when I deploy the remote camera, I just want to check the exposure there. Since the camera's going to be down low, we have a lot of sky and an elephant is dark and trying to guess the right exposure, why bother? Same light, same exposure. Take your incident light meter reading and that's going to allow all those tones to fall within their place. You can never have too much gaff tape. And then this is the um, Westcott triple threat. So I can mount three speed lights within the umbrella for a good punch of power if I need it. And then this is the Mag Mod Mag Shoe. And all of that will be in my suitcase since I am, um, I do have status with our airlines. I'll be able to take two bags. Otherwise, I would just have my clothes in here. All right, so let's get out of this. See any questions? No questions, nobody else out there. All right, so I thought I'd get into a little talk about Africa, international travel, things we're gonna be doing. So here's, you know, I love the culture that we could experience when we travel. Don likes to say that travel is the greatest gift you can gift yourself, which I truly believe, because you get to break bread with local people, you get to experience their customs and traditions, and the more you do this, the more you realize we have more in common than we do in our differences. So this is from a uh, water relief project I did in 2018 with um, Surge for Water in PhotoServe, and it's just such a joyous occasion when, you know, the Westerners come to town and we're there to build wells and bring clean water and just the hospitality and the welcome treatment is, is unbelievable. So let's see if I play, hopefully you can hear the audio. Mark, if you're still there, let me know if you could hear the audio for this video. So what I like to do oftentimes is use the iPhone for the 4K video and I could even put it on top of my camera while I'm shooting stills. I'm primarily a still photographer. So that's, that's my goal. That's what I've done my whole life. But, you know, we can still capture video in the same manner and it's, and it's 4K. 
So pretty outstanding. So I, again, the celebration, everybody's just so welcoming, just wonderful African culture. And this is Uganda, not um, Kenya, where we will be going. But every place that Don and I have traveled within Africa has just been so warm and hospitable. All right, so let's switch to a different one. Uh, here's a hide that we were in in Botswana in Mashatu. So this is a shipping container that is sunk into the ground. So we are eye level with a watering hole and the doors open up and we can stay in here all day. It's quite comfortable. And we have coffee, we have biscuits, but then all the different animals that come to the watering hole is, is just amazing. There's Dawn rocking the M. This time she's gonna be using an R10. And here is the view from the watering hole. So magical. So there are other videos that we have and we've done time lapse. The iPhone is great for doing time lapse. So let me uh, switch to that. I could pull up a time lapse and I'm using Photo Mechanic as my viewer. So let me go here to photos and here's time lapse and here's a time lapse of the elephants enjoying themselves. Let's get this uh, full screen. There we go. And this is from the same hide. And this is just using the iPhone for a time lapse. And it works great. All those little dots you see, <laughs> those are flies and insects flying through the time lapse images. But it's fun when the elephants come to the watering hole everything else cuts out. They take over the pool. And when they leave, the other animals will come back. The hooved animals, the birds, cats, um, Pumba, Pumba, which really are uh, from Lion King, Pumba is the warthogs. So here's the hooved animals that all come in. And again, time lapse. This hasn't been graded or edited. It's just straight out of the phone. So time lapse is great, great tool for using your phone and that frees you up to still be using your high-end mirrorless or digital SLR cameras to capturing actual photographs of what's going on. Very cool. All right. Let's go back to uh, photo mechanic. And we'll just go kind of right down the line here. So these are some photographs I did with PhotoServe, where we were there to install wells, make sure the water is still clean, do testing. Uh, myself and Mike Cologne and other photographers went on this trip to serve. In fact, I still communicate with the people, with, with this guy, Demighty, Demighty right here. I was just uh, WhatsApp mes messaging him, letting him know we're gonna be in Kenya, but he is in Uganda. But it's amazing that people will walk for miles and carry these jerry cans, which are five, 10 gallons on their head. And that's, that's their trek. Every morning they go and get fresh water and they go every evening to get fresh water. And this lady was walking miles barefoot so, and just, but just so warm and inviting. And, you know, I didn't speak Ugandan, she didn't speak English, but you know, you, you find that commonality and people could sense your intentions and always go with an open heart and an open hand and 
you know, I've been welcomed everywhere around the world, invited into people's homes. So Photo Serve and Surge for Water created this well, which is new, and they put it a uh, cement device in there because animals also get attracted to this water. So what they have to do is make sure that the water stays clean and pure so people do not get cholera or any other diseases while drinking this water. We cannot take for granted here in the Western world, the United States, Europe, the value and importance of clean water. Um, the mortality rate in lots of third world countries around the world for infants is so high just because they don't have access to clean water. So donate, do what you can to help provide clean water because this makes such a huge impact on lives around the world. Here again is that welcome parade that I showed you the video clips for. Schools, all the kids dress in uniforms and they truly do realize the value of education. Everywhere we went, they teach them both in their native language, like in Kenya, it's Swahili, and they also teach English for the international language so that when they go to university, they will have a firm understanding of English, which is the international business language. So just, just a great experience. If you ever get a chance to contribute and give back through your ta talents or time, I highly recommend doing it. So yeah, here's, here's some portraits uh, with that lighting set up before. This is the resident plumber for the district we were in, in Uganda. And there isn't anything this gentleman can't fix and he rides his bicycle with his tool bag all over the region helping to provide clean, pure water. So great experience, great experience. Um, here we go. This is another trip that we did in 2007. This was a mission trip we took to Kenya and we went all over Kenya, Dawn and I, and we took our kiddos and again, doing medical, doing clean water, doing hygiene, visiting all these different villages and doing what we can. We, in fact, this uh, pump, we brought parts to fix it because it had been unoperational for almost a year. So there was quite a celebration once we got this thing up and running. Great impact it makes. And this is, <laughs> this is our bus. We traveled all over Kenya in this bus. In fact, that's my roadie cart, which I still use for weddings and events. <laughs> it went to Africa and it got to a point that the starter went out on this Mitsubishi bus and we had to push start it every day. And at that point in 2007, when we were traveling, there weren't any paved roads. And I'd say to our driver and guide, Kennedy, how do you know where we're at? We're going, 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 and then it's all dirt. And then a two track veers off this way. And next thing you know, we arrive at our destination because it's not a robot on a map where now the group we're going with this time, most all of the roads between destinations are paved and they have much better infrastructure because there's been investments. In fact, Nairobi has become almost a uh, Silicon Valley of Africa. There's quite a lot of technology that's going on and high tech in Nairobi. These schools were, were wonderful. Um, this was the Tandora slums. So there's r roughly 250, 300,000 people that live in the shanty towns. And again, this was 2007. And I don't know if that still is happening, but the Tandora slums. And we were there with Compassion International going through. I did bring a small printer with us then, and we took photographs and we left them with pictures and the power that that creates because oftentimes these people have never seen a photograph of themselves. But look at their faces and the joy and the happiness and how content they are. And from our perspective, it's like, oh, how poor and the life they have. But I swear, I saw more happiness and joyful people there than I encounter going around Chicago. Uh, 
So very fun. We brought soccer balls with us, played with the kids. We played soccer. But just, just amazing. The smiles, the joy. With all the hardship and strife, they really embrace the joy in life. Wildlife. All right, we're going to be visiting Lake Nakuru. So this is me back in 2007. And, you know, it, it's fun to hear people talk about uh, megapixels now. When in 2007, this was the uh, 1DX. Was it even the 1DX? No, what's, uh, it's a 5D. So what is this? No. A 1D Mark III. So a 1D Mark III is about 8 megapixel file, right? 8 to 12 megapixel file, you know, and the quality you could pull out of that was outstanding. So now we're going there, you know, my R5 is a 45 megapixel file, you know, and here I was with a Canon 400 millimeter 5.6, very small, easy to travel with, but still, a really good lens. So again, it's the best camera is the one you have with you. Here is a shot with that 405.6. No in-body image, image stabilization. First gen image stabilization on the lens, right? And this is 400th of a second. So panning with it full frame, there you go, right? So I love technology and I love where it's taking us with the cameras and the quality of the images that you can get. But I'm excited to return to Lake Nakuru because that's where all the flamingos go. It's huge amount of fl flamingos and secretary birds and storks. The stork is about five foot tall, just absolutely incredible. So good times. So we will be there in a week. So I'm so excited to be at Lake Nakuru. You've got your zebra, all types of waterfowl, hippos, um, Cape buffalo, and of course there are lions in the area. There's leopards in the area. You know, but on this day, these Cape buffalo were just taking in the wonderful weather and just relaxing by the cool water. So it's it was just a great sight. And then later on, we hiked up. There's a bluff that you call, could overlook. It's called Baboon Bluff. And then you could look down upon the flamingos, you know, in the scene. So it's always nice to look for different perspectives. And this is a 34 mil, 35 millimeter lens. So this baboon <laughs> was, came up to where we were having lunch at our lunch table. It's like, hmm, snacks? Right? So very cool. So Dawn and I are... Crazy excited to be there, to be back in Africa and to be back in Kenya. All right, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to drop them in the feed. I'm here, good, let me get off of my photo mechanic, close that. Yes, I want to close everything, and we'll go back to the camera. There we go. All right, so that's it. That's how we pack. I know, always be prepared. Have your backup cameras. Uh, bring a small tool kit. Have backup batteries. Do everything that you can to prepare and anticipate so that if a camera goes down, a lens goes down, you're not done. You know, this is a, a bucket list trip, a once in a lifetime for a lot of people. So be prepared, back up your images, download, caption, back up, and that way there you won't be disappointed when you get home that you've erased a card accidentally and away went your trip. So thanks again for tuning in, appreciate it. If you find this useful, please share it out, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and check our feed for more workshops. I have another workshop coming up in December to Bosque, Del Apache, and I'll put that in the field of information. And that's to photograph the great migration of sandhill cranes, among other species of birds. 
so thanks again for stopping by and i will talk to you later